Alright guys, hello another video for you all more content on Valve Steam Deck. What we're going to do today is help you get set up with Batacera. This is a dedicated operating system to do emulation retro gaming which we can boot from on the SD card of our Steam Deck. So if you want to know what the fuss is about you can use those timestamps in the video skip ahead and you can see my Steam Deck's already been nicely set up but the point is to get you guys uh, using this too. So you're obviously going to need your Steam Deck you're going to need an SD card. The bigger the better, the more games you can fit on. You're going to need a way to write to that SD card from your computer. Uh, so you need a card reader. Now it won't matter if you've, your computer is a Mac or a Windows PC, the software I'm going to link to will work on either. You are not going to need a USB-C dock to plug in the deck. You're not going to need a keyboard or a mouse plugged in. We're going to transfer all the stuff over the network with software, which makes it really, really easy and convenient. So let's get on with it. We can come off Batacera's YouTube channel and I'll give you the link so you can download uh, the image. So we can see we've got Steam Deck there. It says it's in beta at the moment, so you can expect some minor niggles. It'll eventually come out of beta. It might have done by the time you're watching this video. Those of us who installed it early, it doesn't really matter because we can update Batacera on the Steam Deck itself. Once we've got the operating system on there, we can do it. So we're going to click on direct link and that will download a RAR file so you can extract this out with WinRAR or 7-zip, whatever it is that you use and that will give us this image file. So in order to get this file onto our SD card we need some software to go along with our card reader. So I'm going to suggest we use Belina Etcher because it works on Windows as well as Mac so choose whichever suits your computer and let that download. So whilst that's happening let's just quickly go over to the Screen Scraper website we'll register here and create a free account. Now we do this so Batacera can use this to get metadata, box art, um, video previews for our games that's what makes it look so cool so do remember your password we're going to need that a little bit later on so once we've done that Belina Etcher should have downloaded and we can install it and we can get this image onto our SD card so we need to flash from a file and you're going to point it to the file that we extracted out make sure it's the right one the disk image file it should be larger it won't be the compressed file so you give that a click and open it and now we need to select the target so the nice thing about Etcher is it tries to hide your system drive so you're not going to accidentally overwrite Windows or your operating system now I don't have an SD card plugged in at the moment it's in the Steam Deck uh, but the size of it should give a good idea uh, which is your SD card and it might well say USB card reader device or whatever so we need to tick which is your SD card and then do select which will then uh, allow us to do the flash. So give that a click. That's going to take a few minutes to do. Once it's complete, that can be taken out and the SD card can go into the very bottom of the Steam Deck in the little slot. So what we need to do is actually get into the boot menu. Now I'm going to give you a link to this um, website as well from Steam. Now I know they're talking about Windows, we don't really need this for Batacera, but I'm just going to put it here because now you realize we can boot off the SD card. You could do a Windows SD card as well. So we've got some drivers here if you want to do Windows 11. I've done Windows 11 uh, and it finds the Wi-Fi just fine. So you can use these extra drivers for Windows. But what we care about is getting into the boot menu to boot off the SD card. So it's telling us to get to the boot menu, we need to shut down the Steam Deck and we need to hold down the volume down button at the very top and press the power button. And you should hear a chime, a beep. As soon as you hear that, you can let go of volume down. And a few seconds later, it should come into the boot menu. You can press down, select your SD card, press A, and it will boot into Batacera. That's what we've flashed onto the SD card. So when it's doing its first time run, it's going to you know, make some changes on the SD card. Uh, there's some other things we can do on our PC. So we're going to download FileZilla. This is FTP software. This is what's going to let us get our BIOS files and our games from our computer onto the Steam Deck into Batacera. So download it for Windows 64-bit or your Mac operating system. And I'll just show you that Batacera has a wiki. Think of it as instructions. So we're on a bit about WinSCP. Now WinSCP is software for Windows. It's basically the same difference as using FileZilla. We want this information. The host name, 
the username and the password. So it's Batisera, username is root and the password is Linux. So once you've downloaded FileZilla, you can open it up. And we can do file and the site manager and you can do a new site. So we're basically making a profile. So if you want to come back and connect again, we've already got it set up. So I've called mine Batisera Deck. The protocol we've selected SFTP. The host is Batisera. You can do port 22 if you like. Uh, logon type is normal. The user is root and password is Linux, as we've said. And then we can connect. So there we go. So just keep in mind, this isn't gonna work for you just yet because we need to put your Wi-Fi password and that on Batisera on the Steam Deck. But I just wanna go over FileZilla whilst we're here. So when you can connect your Steam Deck, we can see there's a Batisera comp file. So we're gonna select it, right click, view and edit. So under power button behavior, it's telling me system.suspendmode equals suspend. Now yours probably has a hashtag before it and that means Batisera will ignore that line. So you need to get rid of that hashtag and save it. And the reason we're making this change is that when we tap the power button, it will go to sleep. If we don't make this change, it will turn off and then you've got to hold down the volume down and go through the boot menu and all that stuff again. So if you're just playing a game, you want to put it down for a couple of minutes, we want to do the standby feature. So make that change, get rid of that hashtag file and save it. And then when you close the, uh, the notepad, FileZilla is going to notice you've made a change and ask, do you want that sent back to the Steam Deck? So of course we're going to say yes, because we want the change to go back. What we want to talk about next is getting stuff on there. So we've got media and we've got our share. So let's just make that a little bit bigger. So there's our folder for our BIOS files. Now, unfortunately, I can't give you these, nor can I link them. Uh, they are archived online. Google is your friend. But BIOS files are basically the files that emulators need to pretend to be the systems we want to emulate, whether it's a Dreamcast or a uh, the Mega Drive, the Mega CD, whatever. So we need to get our files from the left side over to the right side. And the same for our games, so our ROMs. So you can see there's 3DO for the Panasonic 3DO, Nintendo 3DS, the Commodore Amigas, and so on. So over to the left, you can see I've got uh, some PlayStation 2 stuff. We can look for PS2. There's PS2. So I can just drag that across into there. So if you've got a number of files you can highlight them or hold down control and select the files that you want and then drag those across. So there you go, now you know. And if you want to do more stuff in the future we just go back into the site manager and you can easily log back on. So now you know how to get the stuff onto the Steam Deck. We're going to cut over to my Steam Deck now and show you what we need to do in Batisera itself. Right, so we're now on our Steam Deck in Batisera. I've done a reasonably good job setting mine up and we want to get you to the same kind of level. So let's push what I'm going to call the start button, right side of the Steam Deck between that thumbstick and the XY buttons. That brings up the main menu. So let's head down using the D-pad to network settings and press A. I'm already connected, but you will want to enable your Wi-Fi. Go down to the SSID, so press A on there, choose your access point and of course go down to Wi-Fi key, press A to enter your Wi-Fi password. Once you're on the network you can now do what we've just shown in FileZilla, get your BIOS files and your games copied across just using the network. Of course once you have the internet connection as well you can also scrape your games, get the metadata, the artwork and the video previews. So we do that through the scraper option. So we can choose the database that we're going to use. We set up that free account for screen scraper. So we'll set it up with scraper settings. I'm just going to push up so we just go directly to the bottom. So you can uh, key in your username and the password that you chose for your account there. And set some of the options whether you want it to grab video previews and fan art and stuff like that. Even the manuals for the games. Right, so we'll just come out of the scraper for now. We'll show we've got the updates and downloads. So there's a content downloader. There's some free games you can grab. Uh, bezels, so black borders left and right of the screen. Steam Deck screen is 16 by 10. Many of these retro games will be 4 by 3. They're a square rather than a rectangle. 
as I say, we fill in those black borders with overlays artwork. So it's all sorts of stuff you can grab in here. I think there's some music as well for the main menu. It's uh, some stuff for the MS-DOS if you want to do scum games. So we've got themes. So I've left it on carbon because this is the default theme to help you follow along. But there are other themes that can make it look much snazzier. So you choose what you want to use. You've got little previews here. Don't go too silly with it. Otherwise, you're just using up space, which you could be using for games. My personal preference is one called platform. But yeah, you just grab what you like the look of. And there are some personalizations we can do for each theme. So we've got the bezel project as well, so we can download again those overlays on a per system basis you see I've done them all other than MAME because I'm just doing Final Burn Neo for the arcade stuff right so we'll go down to system settings so we can go into the information and we can see my user disk space so I filled up about half of the SD card I've still got plenty of room to put more games on uh, we can see I'm losing about 6 gig to the system partition, so a 512 gig card, never get that full capacity, and so it's probably about 480-ish, and then I lose about uh, 6 gig to the uh, system partition. So we can see my battery charge and the temperature of the Steam Deck. We'll just go back, set your language, set your time zone. We've got the Kodi settings, so you might want to disable it if you're not interested in doing multimedia, watching videos and stuff like that, but I do. Uh, so we can have it load into Kodi when we boot into Batisera, which is what I normally do, and then I can exit Kodi if I want to play games. We'll show Kodi in a little bit, I explain why I like using it in Batisera. I've turned the brightness right down because it's way too bright on the default setting video output just leave yours on auto i'm on display port because i'm just going for a capture card you've got the splash set in there so by default it'll play a little video every time it boots up some people like to change it for their own videos i've just put it to an image i don't need to see that every time i load it up all right so we don't want to go silly otherwise we're going to be here a month for sundays if we go for all the options so let's just load up cody quickly as i mentioned it so though I have installed this within SteamOS through the desktop mode, I did find some problems with it and I couldn't use my HD Home Run uh, network tuner. So my TV area, I get live TV and I tried to enable it in Kodi and SteamOS, it just crashed Kodi. So that was a bit of a problem, uh, but I tried it here in Batisera and I can get the live TV, so that's awesome. I've also found that it will load my movies over the network attached storage much faster as well. Now you're not going to hear any audio because I've muted it just so you can hear me speak. Uh, but yeah, the fact I can access my movies and watch TV wherever you know, I'm sitting with the Steam Deck, I think is I think it's pretty cool. So on top of that, I've also added in you know my Disney Plus subscription and, and Netflix and Amazon Prime so I can watch that stuff and listen to music and radio as well. It's kind of cool. So we can just come out of Cody. Again, I themed this and skinned it to make, give it like a retro gaming feel. Right, so we're back into Batisera. Let's push start. So we're going to go into the game collection settings. We're going to start getting things to look snazzy. So we're going to group systems. So what it's trying to do is, like for the Mega Drive, it's adding in the 32X games as well. Now, I, I personally want everything separated out as, as different systems, so I've unticked them all except under ports. I'm happy for the file manager and all that stuff to stay there. Uh, but for the SNES, I don't want extra games from Satellaview and Sufami Turbo. You might not add those games in from those systems, so it won't affect you. But I just think it's good practice to separate them out. So your NES games and the Famicom disk system are completely separate as well. Right, so let's go into game settings and we'll update the game lists. What it's going to do, all of those game files you've put into those folders, it's going to read through the folders, read through the files, and then create a game list file. And now it will actually populate your systems, the wheels. So we're going to Final Burn Neo, and you won't have the artwork yet, but it should at least list the names of the games. So we need to now scrape for this artwork and data. So let's go down to the scraper, 
push start so we're going from screen scraper and you can see that it says systems included it's just the one because I've gone into the wheel to select it if you just did it from the main menu it would try to scrape all of the systems now we only get so many downloads per day from screen scraper and we don't want to just leave it running forever so I suggest you do it a system at a time so we can just do this one system and we can scrape now press A and it'll come up with a little box in the top right hand corner it'll be telling you how far it's got how many games there are and, and what it's up to if you think that it's got stuck it hasn't moved off a particular game for a long time this happened to me too so I push start just go into game settings and update your game list again that will stop it scraping and you can literally just go back into the scraper again and scrape again and you might find it just moves on a little bit quicker what you might find is even after you've scraped that some of your games just don't have artwork so we can hold down the A button on a problem game so we've got some options here and we want to go down to the bottom to edit the metadata so it could actually be the name of it which has caused the problem it doesn't match with the database so it might be uh, Legend of Zelda comma the because they've put the at the end it's thrown it off another example might be if you want to do the Commodore Amiga you do the LHA files so you've got the name of the game in there but there's also like the version number and underscores it can throw uh, the database off so you can change it to be Walker or you know, the Chaos Engine might be the Chaos Engine has the at the end so just rename it to something you think it's gonna have more success scraping and we can press the enter key there to bring that name up and then we can go might be easy if we go straight to the top to get to the bottom and then you can scrape so the difference is now that it's going to go through the other databases not just uh, screen scraper so give it a few seconds so screen scraper has loads of uh, stuff for it uh, I've got the games database so kick and Konami 88 because it's named off the zip file so yeah we can see that the games database doesn't have the video preview there's no there's no camera there so we want from screen scraper or the arcade database right so let's go back you'd save it if you want to save your changes that's scraping our games so do it system by system so we've got our bluetooth settings should have mentioned this earlier but if you want to you know add a fight stick or something like that and do two player games uh, by adding other devices you can so i'm just going to go into the user interface and i'm going to change to the platform theme so press the b button so you see it's completely changed it looks far more snazzy I've changed it so I've got a wheel to the left to show the systems now I can press X which brings up a quick search so I can you know type in alien uh, and it will find all the games that's got the word alien in it so that's kind of useful to know we can press the B button which brings up the manufacturer options so if you know you want to do you know, Nintendo stuff you can go straight to the Nintendo section so there's the NES so I've separated it out the FDS so Game Boy, Super Nintendo so you won't see um, this Bandai the, the, what's it called the Sufami Turbo I'm more of a, a Sega boy myself so I've got all kinds of Sega stuff in here like seeing the the gamepad and the and the retro consoles and all their glory love the game gear very much reminds me of the game gear the steam deck especially the fact that i need a, a battery pack really uh, to keep it going uh, i've got the sega cd there the mega cd as i knew it there's the 32x the add-on for it so i've got the dreamcast I've got a few games in here but I know I've got plenty of space so I can add more in these are the the disk based systems so their games can take up quite a bit of space so I've got Neo Geo CD I've got the PlayStation there as well as the PS2 
So let's just load something up. You're not going to hear anything because I've muted it. It's kind of cool just to see the boot logos. You can see I've got those bezels come up to fill in the black bars to the left and right of the screen. See, my brother's a big PlayStation fan. I had the uh, the OG Xbox. I've still got mine. I've modified it. Um, I do keep my old stuff. Have some fun with it. I did have the PSP. Did some mods with that as well. So the game's loading up. So it says it's checking for a memory card. It's fine. It's just going to do it off the internal storage. Off, not the internal storage. The storage off the SD card. So we can press... Start, can we skip it? Start button to continue. So we can load our profile and, and play the game. To quit, we just do what I'm gonna call start and select together. So those buttons either side of the thumbsticks. So I'm not showing absolutely everything that can be done uh, within Batisera. There's there's many other you know retro uh, computers and you could technically do the Wii U and the Xbox. Uh, they're kind of fiddly to do. I think I'd rather do them within SteamOS because I don't get to use the, the trackpads, the thumbsticks in Batisera, or not yet anyway. Uh, so yeah, the, the gyro control is also very useful if I want to do uh, the Wii U games like Zelda Breath of the Wild. So yeah, I'm not saying this is a complete replacement for doing EMU deck, but uh, yeah, it's still a nice option all the same. If you put a little bit of time in, you can get it looking pretty cool. So we'll just push start, do the user interface settings. So you can see theme configuration. You can make some changes in here. I don't want to go through all the options. As I say, I don't want the video to be a month of Sundays, but you can tinker around with the settings and see the changes that they make and find something that suits you. All right, so let's just make sure there's nothing I'm missing. I think we're all good. So we'll leave it there, guys. Have a great day. Have a great evening, whatever you choose to do after watching this. And as always, I'll see you when I see you next. Ciao for now.